Hey guys, we've got another uh, installation of our Q&A and today's question comes from Tony Norden and he's got two questions, one of which I won't be able to answer here on uh, YouTube and that has to do with the most extreme femdom BDSM relationship or scene that I've ever seen. Uh, so if that's something that interests you, pop on over to Patreon. Uh, everybody who donates to my Patreon uh, we'll get to see the video uh, that will answer that particular question. Um, but the one that I am going to answer here on uh, YouTube is, uh, and it's a bit of a long one here, have you ever met a woman that was truly into male chastity or do they feel like it's kind of fake? I mean, it's supposed to be all about handing over the key, dick and control to the woman because now she's in control. But instead, it's the male that's the focus 90% of the time. Penis, 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 cage, orgasm, look at my penis. Uh, what's your take on the topic? Is it mostly uh, to indulge the man um, that so many women go along with the whole chastity thing? Well, Tony, um, first off, you are a man after my own heart. Uh, while a lot of chastity play does seem to be very penis centric, like as in it's focused on the penis. Um, that's not the way I prefer to do chastity. And for the record, I am a fan of chastity myself. Uh, we'll do some videos talking about these devices and honor system chastity and everything else. But um, this is the only device I have at the moment. Hopefully I will be getting a few more in soon to, so I can talk about different styles of devices. Now, as for women that are actually into it, I think you're going to find a mix of people. There are some women that are really totally into the idea of chastity and we love it. Um, and it can be a really good uh, thing to add to a relationship. And I mean, this doesn't necessarily have to be always uh, heteronormative relationships with, uh, you know, a man and a woman. It could be queer relationships or anything else. Um, and it doesn't necessarily need to be romantic relationships. A lot of people will engage in DS relationships without a romantic uh, component. Now, I think if you are finding a lot of women online that sort of take the role of key holder um, or that type of thing, then you are going to find really penis focused chastity stuff. Because a lot of those women, first off, will want to be paid. They are doing it as a professional service. Um, and once you kind of cross that line, things can get a little blurry. Now, I have done chastity as a professional dominant, but uh, it's few and far between because a lot of the clients that I saw that wanted chastity play wanted that penis focused chastity. Uh, I am, like you said in your question, I prefer to lock things up and leave it alone. I actually prefer to use the honor system because I find that even chastity devices bring attention to the penis a little more than I would prefer. Uh, and if I can't trust my partner to follow through on the agreements we've made, then what am I really doing with that person in the first place? Um, both my current partner and previous partners, we've engaged in chastity play before. Um, and sometimes that will include a high level of arousal for them. Other times it won't. It really depends on the person and how we agree to go about our chastity. Now, I like, like I said, to do the honor system. Devices are nice. We will use a device if we're going to do a scene, like have some playtime, and I want to use that. Or if we're going to go out to, uh, say, a kink party, and I want them to be thinking about the fact that I have their dick locked up in a cage, then, you know, a, a device is great for those uh, times. But if it's just day-to-day -day stuff, I expect to be able to say to my partner, no touching yourself, no masturbation, no, none of that, no self-pleasure, and I expect them to follow that. Uh, so there are a lot of women out there like me. Um, I run a class uh, that involves chastity discussions as well as some other uh, aspects of orgasm control. Sorry, there's like a fluff there. Uh, some other aspects of orgasm control. And uh, I have to say that those classes are probably 70% female dominance that show up. And of those 70%, I'd say it's probably split pretty close down the middle between those who are in it for their own 
pleasure and enjoyment as well as that of their partners, but mainly focused on the type of chastity that you're talking about uh, versus the other 50% who are there because they basically are just wanting something to add to their repertoire to make their partner happy. Their partner has brought up this idea of chastity. Now, that said, once we go through the class and we talk about chastity, some of them go from that very penis-centered uh, version of chastity, and they start making their way over to the other side. So um, I think what it is, it's a matter of finding people that are, just like anything else, that are compatible. Now, if you want to do chastity that is very penis-centered, that's totally fine and absolutely a legitimate way to do chastity play. Um, when we deny something, we want it more. Think about like the last time that you wanted to go on a diet and you were like, that's it, no more chocolate cake for me, I'm done. And then for the next two weeks, all you can think about is chocolate cake until you finally cave and you, you eat a whole chocolate cake instead of just one small slice, right? Um, so there is that aspect to it and it's very, very common. Um, so it's again, just finding people that are compatible with your ideas of chastity. And I wouldn't say that people that are into a more penis focused chastity or genital focused chastity, because this will extend to people that, uh, beyond, you know, just men and women, it will uh, expand to everybody, but people that are more focused on genital focused chastity they're no less into it than anybody else. Uh, it's just a different style of it. Um, it's similar to when we, I did uh, videos on caning. We have caning that will uh, feel good, that will hurt a little but not feel that bad. And then we have things like cold caning and very severe caning, which uh, you know are much more intense and would be generally used for punishment or for very extreme masochists. So it's the same kind of idea with chastity. Some people are going to prefer having, uh, you know, that constant arousal and that reminder that they're not allowed to self-pleasure versus people that are kind of lock it up and forget about it. If I want to talk about your genitals, I'll bring it up and we'll deal with it at that point. So again, just a matter of finding compatible partners. Um, and I think that you are much more likely, and I say this all the time, you're much more likely to find compatible partners in the kink community rather than online, um, especially I think when it comes to female dominant male submissive and chastity playing very specifically um, because there are so many men out there who have this idea that oh it would be a great thing to do and they inundate a lot of the women and so then you get a lot of the sort of um, I mean obviously you'll have lots of professional dominance out there um, and I think that they serve a very important purpose having been one and probably will be one again um but also you find the people that are like well if 20 guys are gonna bug me about this i might as well start charging that aren't you know necessarily professionals but they're sort of trying to like play both sides of things um so i think if you're yeah if you're exchanging money for chastity it's going to be very genital focused if that's not what you're interested in i think you'll have a much harder time finding a partner but if you get out to the community you will more likely find a partner that is into a mutually uh enjoyable and satisfying form of chastity that you can find so i think this is a great question I could seriously go on for hours about it because chastity is a personal kink of mine. Um, and I will do some more videos on chastity, reviewing different chastity devices and all kinds of fun stuff like that. So please do stick around for those in the hopefully near future. But uh, I'm going to leave it there because otherwise I'm just going to talk forever. Uh, but thank you so much for your question, Tony. Um, I, I really appreciate that. And uh, so that was one of my Patreon questions that I wanted to get to right away. And uh, yeah, we'll have another question next week. Thanks very much for checking this one out, guys. And I'll see you in the next video.